canyons of the Green and Colorado River and through the Grand Canyon. This was in 1868. This was unceded territory. Basically, it was kind of, we'll, we'll let the Sioux live here as long as they don't bother us type thing. There was a treaty, but it was, this was more of an informal operation. Uh, a couple of maps showing <coughs> where Cal went on these trips. 1867, he, was, he came out to Denver, Pikes Peak, and up along the Colorado River. 68 and 69, he was further west along the rivers. But these were where the plans were hatched to do a river trip this time. 1868, up at the headwaters, there was, the White River was a tributary to the Green. <clears throat> so it was, uh, the Union Pacific Railroad uh, finished. It came actually came through um, Green River as part of the Transcontinental Railroad in September of 1868. But Powell used that in 1869 and in 1871 to begin his river trips to come down the Green River. So the men that are possibilities, the names that immediately come up are three men who were part of the great reconnaissance, great surveys of the American West at the time. Powell's contemporaries. Keep pressing the phone button. Wheeler, uh, the only military man of the bunch, uh, was doing uh, overland surveys and actually came up the Colorado River after, in between Powell's two trips. Hayden and King, were working further north and further west than Powell. But certainly because they were part of this reconnaissance, reconnaissance surveys of that time period, um, they could have been candidates for doing that. Wheeler was the only one who did, had any river experience, but his happened after Powell's first trip in 1869. But if Powell were up in the Dakotas and stayed there, didn't come down to do a river trip, what would Wheeler have come up with? But he had decided that a river was a good way to go, or did he decide after Powell's notoriety on a river trip, he decided to do it. A candidate here is William N. Byers, one that not too many people uh, know about. Don Lago in that second uh, proceedings from the History Symposium makes a great case for Byers. Um, Byers was a Denver businessman. He was the founder of the Rocky Mountain News, which just closed. Last month, if any of you read that in the newspaper after you know 140 something years of publication, he was the founder and publisher. His brother-in-law uh, and his employees ended up being on the trip with Powell in 1869. Powell knew him when he went out there in 1867 through these associations. Uh, there are some Bloomington, Illinois connections also. Don Lago goes into a lot of that in, in his article. Um, he is able to ferret out so much information. He, he scrolls through uh, newspaper microfilm and, and gets some incredible information. Byers also uh, was financing Powell's 1867-1868 work. And they may have had a falling out when they climbed in 1868 and climbed Long's Peak. Uh, may have had a falling out. But Byers, according to these newspaper articles and language interpretation, Byers was going to go on the 1869 river trip. He would have been a good candidate. But the idea of the river trip to fill in the blank spots on the maps, um, anybody's idea, came up during this time period with Byers and the men that Al came down with who were associated with Byers. A couple of maps, oh, blocked you off again. <laughs> A couple of maps uh, showing through the, uh, particularly through the Grand Canyon portion with some identification. Uh, this is, once again, Green River, Wyoming, and Powell's trip ends here, the mouth of the Virgin River. Four of the men on the, well, three men leave in separation about in there. Um, four men, men go down further, two of them all the way to the Gulf. A lot of what we have about Powell is typical of the late 19th century. It's this romantic period, uh, the frontier, Native Americans, exploration, and uh, a lot of 
the illustrations done to show the, the romantic aspects of it. Here's Powell, bottom of a rapid, with an illustration waving his hat to the other men, signaling, we're okay, or pull in, we're over here. Everybody's doing artist interpretations. And this, the canyon has been interpreted uh, many times, even before this, when we get to Ives and Eggleside uh, woodcuts and things like that. Um, this is the wreck at Disaster Falls up on the Green River where they lost one of the boats and a lot of their supplies. If any of you have been up there in Lodore Canyon, you'll see that it doesn't look like this. <laughs> uh, here's a little guy out there. Is that pal? Is that only one arm or is he trying to swim with a stump? What are the other guys? This romantic it's this image versus reality that we'll see a lot coming up. Uh, with, with anything you read about late 19th century literature. Powell was very good at that. When he did his report, he saw his sketchy um, diaries, diary entries. When he did his report, it was very uh, romanticized and very intriguing, and very captivating. And part of the reason he was writing that way is the literature of the period was like that. But also, he wanted more funding from the government. He had only some draft reports, and they said, well, if we're going to fund you anymore, we need some, some product. So we wrote a great story, kind of a bestseller for a government publication, and he got more funding for the surveys. Here's the rescue. Um, Bradley up here, lowering his long johns to pal with one arm and gets cliffed out. The question that you might ask is, if those are Bradley's drawers, why does he have all the rest of his clothes on? Well, they weren't going to show the actual um, uh, imitation of this. In reality, the men were down to so few clothes. Their clothes were getting beat up, torn, wrecked, waterlogged, ripped, exposed to the sun, that they basically boated in their long johns. They're trying to save their clothes. Plus, they were wet a lot. So got multiple layers of clothes on there all wet. It's pretty uncomfortable. Uh, they boated in their long johns. So it seems like this event probably occurred, but not like this. Bradley would have been hiking in his long johns. So he would have been easily been able to take them off and use them the rest of the cow. But he wouldn't have taken all his clothes off, taken his drawers off, put his clothes back on, and then rested. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, in Wallace Sanders' biography, he talks about the story. He says, um, you know, some have doubted the veracity of the story, but if it's not true, it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Here, once again, we're back up to the put-in in Green River, Wyoming. This, like I said, the second trip, 1871. Frederick Dellenbaugh, who I think is over here, is the illustrator. E.O. Beeman is the photographer at that time. And then we have the major in a great view. People have, you know, somebody said, well, look the way the major is facing. He's got his stump of a right arm facing out. Is he trying to show that, you know, he's a main man and yet he's still uh, strong and an invalid? Another picture I don't have in here shows him facing the other way with the left side of the With Beeman actually in a boat at that, <coughs> that period. So it's looks like the same photo, but it's not. So it just happens that that's the choice. That this was the, visually, this was the best shot as far as exposure and a lot of other things. So it gets reproduced a lot. <clears throat> Powell was doing this trip. He saw an opportunity, tried to fill in the blind spots of the maps. This doesn't show much, but this is right. The Utah Arizona border, and I'll show some other maps that show uh, Terra Incognita or unknown lands. But, this is the, the Ives report from the 1858. And you see the course of, you don't see where the rivers are coming in through the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon's wrong, Little Colorado's wrong. Uh, the only part that's really accurate is here. This is the Big Bend. You know, Vegas would be up here. It's called the Big Canyon at that time. Uh, Powell is trying to rectify this by plotting.